Hi everyone and welcome to my place. I've had a request from Joan in Tennessee in America asking if I could show different ways of making a pot de fleur or which is pretty much a French garden design with living plants and fresh flowers that you can bring from inside, outside. Now I've got two ways of doing them. I either do them this way, where I've got the urn and I've got the, the container in the inside to put the fresh flowers, but pretty much basically it's just like once your soil's around the outside and you've got your little plants around the exterior, um, once it grows, it's just a really lovely base in which you can add fresh flowers or plants. The one I want to show you today is not using the fresh, but using the artificial. And who said you can't combine both? That's what I say. So we'll just put that to one side. Here I've got a big container. Oh, I love these big things. I reckon if you're gonna do it, just make something really big and wacky. These would also be fabulous for um, a celebration piece on a banquet, or they could be lovely on a sideboard. And it's just basically one of those really lovely designs that once you've got your artificial forms in, you can just plonk a real living plant into it as and when you need to. So what I've done into here is I have, I'm using the green foam. I should be using grey foam because I'm using artificial, but sometimes I put fresh flowers into this as well. So I keep that moist at all times so that I can use it. And I've got the bucket in the inside, which I then put a vase inside of so that it pretty much, um, I've got a vase that size so that when I do put the vase into it, it's, sits into that so that it's not, I don't have to destroy the whole design to get the forms that I want out. So it's just a matter of lifting that in and out. Now these were really popular oh, look, a long, 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 long time ago. And I think it's really great that they're starting to come back. So to put your materials in, it's just a matter of just pushing those in to your container. And I've just got a whole heap of artificial stuff here. It was just it pretty much what I had on hand. There's no hard and fast rules about how this is achieved. Putting that down into there like that. So you've got things that are bushing up and you've got things that are falling down and then you've got you know, stuff like the maiden here. It's just, there is no hard and fast rules, trust me about this. Now I've got a little bit of grey foliage and I'm gonna take that out of there because that is artificial and that's all living in there. But I think that it's great just to be able to just, you know, change it up to suit. So from there, that goes into there. I've got some lovely um, artificial orchids that I'm going to just push down into there so that they sort of like sit up there on their own. Another bit into there. And I've got this bit here, which I'll just push over and into there. It doesn't matter which way they go, and I think that whichever way they're going, as long as they look natural, then from a distance, nobody's gonna be able to tell. I've also got a little bit of this lamb's ear, which I thought I'd just put in there just to break some of the color up. That can go into there, and I will diffuse that by bringing that around and into there. So just have a look at that, see how I've got the colors sort of like, not really evenly distri distributed, but as distributed as I can. Right, I've also got some lovely anthuriums here. Now with these, I don't normally like to, I don't usually use things like this, but I just thought that with the form that I'm doing today, or, or the flowers that I want to use today, or the real plant that I want to use today, these could look really lovely just sticking in there. I've got a couple more of those. I just love the quality of artificial flowers that you can buy now. They just, you know, make designing so much easier. So I've got two over there. I'm just gonna bring, and these you can bend and do whatever you like, it's fantastic. And you tell, look, from a distance, who's gonna know whether it's fresh or artificial, for goodness sake, nobody is. So I've got seven of these, so I'll just put another one in. These are good cutters, and if anybody in the world was to see anything like this and think, what would they be good at home? Let me just tell you, they are the best cutters that ever were invented, and they, I've had these for years, and they're still going. I had lots, but unfortunately, I might have left them on building sites and places, design sites, when I've been doing stuff over the years. Okay, so we'll just bring those down. So I've got some highs, and I've got some lows, and I've got some ups, and I've got some downs, and I've got flowers going in towards the centre. You could, add, now from there, once you've got that sorted out, you can, the sky's at the limit, and this is what I really wanted to do. So I'll put that there, I'm sorry it's so tall, but I've got this lovely anthurium here, and I just thought 
that that could look quite beautiful in there. So tell me what's fresh and what's artificial. As a composition and standalone design, I think that that's fantastic. It looks huge and big and looks like it's got lots in it and it was really hard work, but it wasn't. Because this, the living plant is down inside the, the bucket, it's, going to, it's easy for me to water. I can lift it in and out. If I change my mind and decide I'd like, say, a Cymbidium orchid plant, I can just put that into the center. So there we have a pot of fleur or a French indoor garden that was simple to put together. I hope, Joan, that this has helped you with different ways that you can come up with a pot of fleur. Thanks for watching and I'll see you another day. Mm -hmm.